All right, all right. Live again, and uh, I'm going to do something a little different today with this live stream. I have in the past with uh, my character creation class that I hold, um, I've always tried to, always kind of struggled with trying to find a way to uh, to make the class interesting enough uh, for students to have them uh, be uh, invested in what it is that we're doing uh, and make sure that they are interested enough in the class to want to continue uh, doing the work. And uh, and I usually typically will go about doing this by making the uh, the very first class that we have fun and uh, making it uh, engaging so that students are are kind of uh, are pulled in and uh, and want to kind of keep going and are excited with what it is that we're going to be doing. Originally, when I started teaching this class, uh, I would do it with uh, I would do it with work that was um, from a game. I had concept art from a game that I had worked on ages ago uh, in which there were a ton and ton and ton of characters. This was from a first-person shooter, and uh, the characters were all uh, soldiers. And uh, I did this for a number of years, and the uh, it, it worked. I mean, the soldiers were kind of, uh, you know, very typical game-type characters, and uh, we did female soldiers, and we did male soldiers, and we did... Um, soldiers of different ethnic backgrounds, and uh, at the end of the day, it wasn't really, uh, as far as I could tell anyway, fun for students. Uh, there wasn't a lot there that kept them very engaged in what was that we were doing. And so I began to look for uh, other ways of being able to, to make the students engage. And the first thing that I came up with was doing... Uh, doing characters for a game that already exists. So taking a game that is already pretty popular and creating DLC characters for that game. The first attempt at this was a, um, a set of characters that were for Injustice 2. And we did uh, Marvel characters as though they were in part of the uh, Injustice 2 game. Uh, and so that was pretty good. It gave us a uh, it gave us a design scheme that we could run with. You know, there's a very distinctive look. There's a very uh, precise look to how those characters uh, exist in that game. And so we did that. And uh, I ended up getting away from that and getting into Overwatch, which was the uh, the second run around at this that I had done and uh I've done Overwatch for two years now and uh if I were to do it this September that would make three years in a row and I'm I'm actually a little sick of doing Overwatch myself so uh I started thinking of what would be next what would be the uh the next game uh to make DLC for and uh, I decided that it wasn't going to be uh a game not an, an existing game but um, more of a game idea that we could run with and uh, and create content for. And uh, I'm going to take a break from working on Mask in order to make this little interactive game that we could play in class um, in order to help the students uh, kind of figure out what they're going to be modeling for the semester. So to kind of break down what this is going to be, it's going to be a basement, uh, an old, dusty, dirty basement from a house, a fairly large home. And, uh, and it's, it's an unfinished basement. There's going to be pools of water, and it's going to be, the house is going to be somewhat destroyed and um, kind of run down. And uh, strewn throughout the home are going to be various knickknacks. And the knickknacks are each going to be associated with some form of monster slash creature. And the way this is going to work is I'm going to set up the game so that uh, when it runs, when anybody uh, plays the game for the first time, they are going to spawn somewhere random in the basement and the content in the basement is going to be uh, in interactable, so you can pick up items and, uh, and look at them. 
And when you do that, it is going to uh, essentially lock in what creature you're going to be doing for the uh, for the year. You also need to make a survivor or a hero version of that character as well, uh, which is going to be the the non monster version. So uh, a very uh, a very kind of to the point example of this is going to be let's say you wake up in the basement and you clear the cobwebs from your vision. And the first thing that you see on the shelf is a wooden stake, and you pick up that wooden stake. Just like that, you're going to be locked into doing a vampire for the duration of the semester. Uh, actually, for the two semesters. So you'd have to make the, the survivor of the vampire as well as the vampire itself. So a monster version of your character as well as a hero version of your character. And so I'm going to start working on this. I have zero done for this other than the... Uh, the principal idea of how it's going to work. Um, I know after doing some of the other systems that I've done in the past, I know a few key things uh, that I'm going to want to include with this. Um, let's go in and, and start kind of plugging away some things here. So the first thing I'm going to do is some documentation. Um, number one, I'm going to go into my projects folder. And this is a new project, so we're going to create a new folder. Um, and I'm going to call it cabin in the woods which is where the premise for this idea came from uh the movie cabin in the woods as something quite similar um there where uh where a bunch of teenagers uh encounter various artifacts and so i'm kind of using their premise which is why i'm going to call it that um i also try to give these things little bits of nicknames um and uh, the last two that i've done um, were called Roulette and Gumball, and so they all kind of have these little code names that uh, I plug away on here while I work on these things. Um, so, Cabin in the Woods. Inside of this folder, I'm going to create a new folder, uh, which I'm going to call Documents, um, for all of the documentation I need to create during the uh, the process here. Uh, and inside the Documents folder, I'm going to create the first of two Excel sheets. So uh, Excel sheet number one, uh, where are you? Excel is going to be called tasks. And I'm going to go and set up some some tasks here uh, that I know are going to be things I'm going to uh, to need to do throughout the process of creating this thing. Um, so these are kind of uh, systems slash artwork slash kind of a just co a large combination of everything so the first thing that i need to uh need to create um is going to be a pickup system or an item system maybe we call it item pickup system uh and maybe what i'll do is actually take this move it down one and we'll call the we'll call the layer system here um so this is going to kind of be the uh the first uh category here that i really need to uh to deal with and um we're going to need so let's make this bigger here so an item pickup system we are going to need a uh random Spawn position. Uh, what else are we going to need in here? Uh, we are going to need um, item interaction. So, uh, indicator. So, it's going to be something that indicates that items can be picked up. We are going to need a email results system which is going to email me the results of anybody playing with this. Uh, item pickup, random spawn, item interaction indicator, email result system. So that should really be um, all of the, the complex systems I'm going to need, um, which is good. Um, down here, we're gonna make uh, environment, and in the environments, we have the basement. Uh, which is going to be the only environment I really need to worry about. We are going to need to 
to create items. Um, so I'm going to have to create, actually, maybe what I'll do is instead of calling them items, I'm going to call them totems, uh, which is a, I think, a much better na list uh, name for what these things are. Now, typically in a semester, I have 50 students uh, when I teach my character course. Those 50 students are usually in uh, two separate sections. And so I would like to have a total of 50 um, uh, 50 separate, if I can spell, uh, set, uh, uh, items. And I didn't spell items. And if I can, I'll have to come up with 50 different totems. Um, I may create player hands. Uh, I may not. Maybe, uh, maybe we'll see. Um, the thing with player hands is that it's going to require animation. It's going to require rigging. And there's a whole other list of work. And so maybe what I can do is down the, the road here, um, create a wishful, uh, thinking list. And this is where I can put player hands. And, uh, and that would be in there. So not too bad in terms of uh, a list of tasks of things that I got to kind of keep track of that I want to do. Um, another thing that I'm going to need to do here is start working on these totems. So I'm going to create another Excel sheet here, which I'm going to call totems. Uh, and this is what's going to be the, uh, the crux of what this class is. Um, is a list of what these totems are. So uh, I'm going to make three categories, totem and creature or associated creature. Uh, like so. Um, and, uh, and we can start going in and putting these things in in a way that kind of makes sense. Now, I don't want them to be completely obvious, and, and the idea with this is that I'm not going to explain it to students when they play it for the first time. Um, I want them to kind of feel around in the dark. That's kind of the whole point of this. Um, if they know that picking up a totem is going to identify what they are going to be working on for the duration of the year, um, it'll make them look for something specific and try to identify something that uh, that'll make sense in terms of what they want to do. So, you know, if they're afraid of doing, uh, if they're afraid of doing fur, then they might not aim for a werewolf. They might aim for, for something else. Um, now, what I'm going to do is, I don't know that I'm going to come up with a list of totems first, or I'm going to come up with a list of associated creatures first, but the idea is to, to come up with those, those two categories here before I do anything else. Um, so let's go and see. Uh, no, 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 let's make this full screen and swarm somewhere in here. Let's just go and do this. Uh, there's my text. There's my text. I'm going to go make these two categories here bigger just so that we can uh, track them and we'll. Uh, we'll make it nice and big. Go There we go. Okay. Okay. So the idea now is to come up with a list of monsters slash creatures uh, that can be um, created within this system. And again, I'd like to get as close to 50 here as I can. So this is going to be a, uh, an interesting list to put together. Now, uh, what I'm going to do is, because I am leaning very heavily on Cabin in the Woods, uh, I'm going to see if I can find a list of Cabin in the Woods um, See if I can find a list of the monsters in, uh, in, cabins in, the in Cabin in the Woods. Um, because they have a ton of them in there, um, which is really, 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 really awesome. Uh, not all of them are human based and I do want to try and keep them human based. Um, 
So the more I can kind of uh, stick to this list here, uh, the better it's going to, uh, I think, turn out. Uh, so, uh, number one, let's do Alien Beast. Uh, and I might as well, over here, add a description, since I think many of these are going to need descriptions um, in order to... Uh, in order to make them uh, understandable by uh, by people. Uh, so the description of the alien beast is a humanoid alien creature. Like so. Uh, we're going to do the bride. And... Let's give the bride a description of um, this would be easier, I think. Actually, uh, trying to no, I'm gonna do it in here. Um, what else? Oh, we'll come back to that one. I don't know what to describe the bride as yet. Uh, clown. Killer Clown. That'll be good. Deadites. Who doesn't love a good Deadites? Um, Demon. That's a good one. Uh, Goblin. Is Member Mint. If I can spell. Ember Mint. Goblin. I don't even know what the hell that is. Sounds fun. Dismemberment Goblin. Uh, doctor. Uh, doll. Uh, I'm not gonna do doll. I don't want. I don't want things that are not human. Um, giant. Pretty good ones in here. Lord. Jack o' lantern. Um, creature from the lagoon. I'm not going to put the black lagoon because I think that's. More a little copyright, and so we don't want to go there. Uh, mummy. That's a good one. Uh, mutant. Uh, reanimated. Which I guess is kind of like a zombie. I'm going to have to get very clever here to see what the difference is between the reanimated and a zombie. Uh... Reptilian. Call this Reptilius. It'll be a half reptile, half human hybrid. Uh, Sass. Watch. Uh, let's let's do them all here. Uh, Wendigo. Flash Yeti. Okay. Um, scarecrow people. Which is which slash warlock? Uh, snowman. Okay. Vampire. Werewolf. Wraiths. Uh, 
Zombie. Zombie. Ancient ones. Blob. Cyclops. That's another good one. Whoa, what the hell did I write? Cyclops. Um... Evil gnome. I'd like to do a, uh, I think a mixture of human creature hybrids here too. Um, maybe that's what I'll do with these. This is going to be an alien uh, slash human hybrid. Um. And maybe what I'll do is add a bunch of hybrids in here, uh, much in the way that a uh, a werewolf is a, a kind of wolf man hybrid. Um, we're gonna do forest spirit um, What else have we got? What else is scary? What else? What else would be frightening? Um, how about a two-headed creature? Two-headed creature. All right, we're at 30. 20 more to do here. Minotaur. That's a good one. Uh, what is that? Minotaur. Yeah, that's... Uh... See what else we have. Where's the doctor? I'm going to put doctor. Flash. Surgeon. I think that works really nice. Uh, reanimated. Frankenstein's monster. Uh, to the clown, I'm gonna put killer clown. I want to do something else fish-like. Um, I really like the idea of um, the creature from the lagoon. Uh, but that's kind of got a, already got a very distinctive look. And I, I'm thinking of like Pirates of the, uh, of the Caribbean. And how many, they, uh, how many different types of, of creatures uh, they got. They've got in that, and so it would be nice to uh, to get something 
in that uh, in that regard. Um, I'm going to do a Google search here for a list of monsters. See what else I find. Oh, I want to add the doppelganger. That's a great one. Uh, we'll add the Kraken. No. I think the Kraken's going to be too big. Let's add Grenville. Be nice to get something that would uh, allow them to do some movie movie guys too. Um, some of the classic movie monsters uh, are pretty good, so maybe we'll add them in. Freddy, Jason, Michael Myers. Um, Leatherface. bad so I'm up to 30 what is it 36 um see I'm gonna read through this list here uh and see if anything else really stands out again I was I was kind of really hoping to do a few um uh do a few like animal human hybrids I think would be fun too uh da -da 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 -da. Um, yeah, I'm gonna put Baba Yaga, but Baba Yaga is just a witch. Okay. Maybe instead of uh, monster list, I'm gonna put movie monster list see if i don't come up with uh anything that i might have been missing here uh alien beast that uh so i'm gonna add i am i am gonna add um a few uh hybrids here um so i'm gonna do the cat slash human hybrid because that's creepy as all hell. Um, we've got Reptilius, which is going to be a human uh, reptile hybrid. Uh, maybe a human bird hybrid. Bird slash human hybrid. I've got Sasquatch. I've got Vampire. I've got... Um, I'll put a troll in here too. I'll try it again. Troll is good. Mutants, I've got uh, a ghoul. Let's add a ghoul in here. And again, the the idea is to uh, try and get this to be a little uh, open to interpretation as well you know i don't want to just say that is what you're making um but actually have them uh, the students that is uh give them the ability to kind of play around with this a little bit um so that they can uh they can come up with something in that way oh a gin gin make great villains uh Let's see, what else? What else is a really good villain? Um, I'm gonna put Cave Dweller in here. Do that. 
into uh, up to into in interpretation as well. I think it'll be uh, pretty fun. That vampire. Put uh, genetically modified something. That's always fun. Genetically modified. Uh, what can we genetically modify? Um, what I put there. Let's jack. I'm gonna put on with jack o' lantern slash. Pumpkin head. Genetically modified something. Genetically modified uh, plant hybrid. Genetically modified plant human plant. That sounds creepy as all hell. Okay, we got, uh, what do you got? Five, I got six more to make. <clears throat> yeah, so far, not too bad. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's any more classic movie villains here that I could use for this. Um, that would uh, That would play out really well. Again, I want to. The whole point of this is to keep fairly human anatomy in the list. And so I don't want to go to a, a point or go to a place where we start getting uh, too, too crazy. I'm going to add another category here of examples as well uh, that uh, I can have students look up in terms of, uh, in terms of what I would want them to do. Uh, so maybe a couple of movies or creature name or what have you. Um, werewolves are good. I don't know if I got them. Uh, Zilla fly. Oh, there we go. Human fly. Human insect hybrid. Human insect. Uh, hybrid. That's gross as all hell. Uh, Xenomorph is the alien. Again, I'm going through. Uh, I'm going through lists online here. I can find them. Oh, what? Um, movie monster lit. See if there's anything I'm missing here. Uh, ba -da -ba -da -dum. uh what else? Mummies, werewolf. Ghost. That would be good. Some kind of poltergeist. Uh, can I spell poltergeist? I think that's how that's spelled. Um, no, that there's much else beyond this. Cool. Empires. A lot of these movies that I'm looking up here have actually just got um, 
I've just got things that they created themselves for their movies. Which makes them a little less scary. Maybe I'll throw Medusa on the list. Yeah, let's throw Medusa on the list. Medusa. What else? What is another humanoid? Creature. I love what they did with uh, Hellboy, the Golden Army. They made uh, tooth fairies evil in that. It's, uh, just brilliant. Oh, a mimic. That's a great idea. Mimic is a uh, type of creature that imitates other creatures or life uh, in order to lure in prey, uh, which is just absolutely brilliant. Um, so it never really looks uh, exactly um, like the uh, the other creature, um, but it's it's enough that it would it would cause someone to kind of uh, say what the heck and then and then kind of come in. Okay. Um. Oh, that might be fun too. Fire creature. Ice creature. One last one will give me 50. One more monster, one more creature, one more piece of evil. Need something that just strikes terror into the heart of those who see it. A zombie or mutant or Kristen Stewart. Some really interesting creatures on this list. Davy Jones. Okay, so I've got creature from the lagoon. Wondering if I should put Davy Jones in here as well, or if it's just too close to that. Or if I just kind of go my own way here and do like mutant cyborg. That's what I'm going to do. Mutant cyborg. There we go. List of creatures, killers, things that will kill you. Monsters, evilness. Um, okay, I'm going to go and uh, make this list easier to read. By clicking on every odd numbered cell. And uh, I'm going to actually give them the same coloring that's here. Make them easier to read. And, uh, okay, let's make those cells this. So that I can read them. Uh, and cell number one, I'm going to go ahead and change the background color here to black. And uh, that should be a little bit better. So uh, I need to figure out a totem uh, for each, each of these things. I'm going to set the text color to black. All of these and the size to 11. 
Make them all bold. Again, just to make it a little bit easier to read. I'm going to scale this up here too. Realize I'm doing this on a uh, 4K monitor. Well, moment. It might be a wee bit hard to read if you're tuning in. So uh, I'm going to go drop this down a little bit too. We'll go to 20. So I need to come up with a totem for each of these things. Uh, something that um, is very clearly going to be associated with each one of these uh, creatures, um, but also isn't going to be incredibly telling in, in case uh, people figure out how the game works. Uh, something that isn't going to be incredibly telling as to what these things are. Um, so for instance, the doctor slash surgeon. Um, this is going to be a doctor's... Uh, bag, which I think is a great choice for something about that size that I can have on the shelf um, that a player might see, it might light up, and you get the interact on it. Um, preferably, I'd like everything to be close to the same size. I'd like everything to be near about the same size. If I can make them all about the same size, uh, it'll make them easier to, uh, to kind of... Uh, put them all over the place inside the environment. Which I think would be super, super useful. So, um... A doctor's bag. Uh, description. A, um... Evil... Doctor... Um, it operates without reason. Read. Done. Okay. And examples of this, I want to give some movie and TV show examples. Um, uh, evil doctor movies. Let's see what kind of movies we can find here. Uh, I know one of them would be, uh, Hostel. Movie Hostel has got some pretty maniacal doctor stuff going on. Uh, Dr. Giggles. And uh, Hannibal, the cannibal. Yikes. Hannibal, the cannibal lector. Um, so there, some good examples of evil doctors. So there is one that's now done. I've got a, uh, a doctor. Go and make all of this old here as well. Zoom back in on it. Let's try and give that some space. Uh, try and spell correctly. Okay. Evil Doctor that operates without reason or to harm. Um... Like so. Um, it's not what I wanted. Back. Uh, let's see. What else can we come up with here? Uh, the bride. That's going to be easy. That's going to be a bouquet of flowers. Uh, what the hell is that text on? Okay, flowers. That's easy. Um, wronged wife out for vengeance. That's how you spell vengeance. Okay. 
Uh, what else have we got? Alien Beast. So we need something for an Alien Beast. Alien Beast here is going to be uh, akin to uh, the Xenomorph or um, the Thing. You know, any any time that there's some kind of an alien entity um, that is uh, mixed with human beings. Uh, okay. We've got, um, let me see if I can figure out how to do this. Okay, uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Um, um, next. This one, two. Up text. It's a little bit more sense. Uh, okay, Killer Clown. Examples of this are pretty easy. This is Pennywise. Uh, who else? Who's one of Killer Clowns? Pennywise is the only one I can. Uh, no, no, no. I'll add uh, add John Wayne Gacy to the list. That's that's kind of creepy. Yeah, Pennywise, John Wayne Gacy. He's an evil clown. I don't know how much I want to put. Uh, know how much I want to put real life people in here. That might be. Um, how about Pogo? Let's see if that's something doable. It's just John Wayne Gacy. Okay, so maybe something like that is going to be of, uh, enough of a reference. Um, we need a prompt for a killer clown. Um, I could really go the Pennywise route and have a balloon floating. Um... Uh, yeah, I'm gonna put the balloon. Uh, maybe I won't make it red so it's not so. Um, so Pennywise the Clown. Got a balloon. Uh, and that'll work out quite nicely for that. Again, it's about the same size. Again, all of these things, they all kind of fit, um, in terms of the, uh, places here. They all kind of fit into the same same kind of size scale which makes placing them around um the world a little bit easier uh okay deadites are from the evil dead 
Um, and I believe they are just demons. I believe they are uh, Kendarian demons. Um, so very, very specific. Uh, Kandarian, I believe. Kandarian demon. Uh, examples here are Evil Dead. And two, I lost all my text color here. Out. Whoa. That really zoomed out. Uh, so let's go and grab all my cells. Say, Frigoff. God damn it. Go for that self. Give me that color. Okay. I'll zoom in again here. You guys can see this. Uh okay, so uh Kandarian Demon. Uh I wanna make sure I'm getting the spelling of this correct. Not that Kandarian. But Uh, maybe it's a K. Yeah, Kendarian with a K. Kendarian Demon, Evil Dead. Um, this one, I think I'm going to put a tree branch or a chunk of tree. I think that'll work out quite nicely. Uh, grab the, uh, dismemberment goblin and see if we can figure out what that is. Um, so the dismemberment goblins are twin goblins. Description twin goblins of diminutive stature. Diminutive stature. Uh, that's not diminutive. Stature. Okay, okay. Um... Now, um... Uh, I think I'm going to put a neck shackle. Yes. That's, that's kind of what they Shackle. Uh, Red Goblin has a devil like appearance and wings, allowing it to fly while the Green Goblin is shorter, hairier. And stubbier creature without wings and has shackles around its neck and wrist. As her name explicitly, explicitly states, they operate primarily by tearing their victims apart limb from limb. They're often recognized by their trademark maniacal laughter, which can be heard all throughout their appearances. So that's creepy AF. Um, but good. Uh, neck shackle, dismember the goblin. Uh, twin goblins of diminutive stature. Um, and they are found in cabin in the woods. Uh, okay, alien beasts. So this is like the uh, the xenomorph. Um, so I think what I'll do is a face hugger pod. 
uh, for that. And examples, uh, alien, uh, again, alien mixed with human. Well, that's the description, and it already is written there. Uh, so, uh, xenomorph from aliens, uh, predator, predator, so on. Uh, okay. We're up to a good start. Uh, now the other thing that this list serves as is uh, a list of all the shit I got to model. Uh, so there's going to be a bunch of it here. Um, maybe what I'll do is I'll, s I'll slide down here and find a few uh, areas here that are going to be easier to fill in so I can start um, concentrating. Um on the uh, on the other areas so this is a reptile slash human hybrid um bigfoot um uh let's say let's gonna say reanimated snowman but snowmen are never animated in the first place um, this is going to be a, a human snowman slash human uh, hybrid. This is Jack Frost. Empires. Description, fangs, suck blood, you know the rest. Um, Dracula, who are some other vampires? Let's say uh, Lost Boys and a really lame TV show, True Blood. Uh, Werewolf. This is a wolf slash human hybrid. Examples are the werewolf. Werewolf of London. Uh... Undone here. Like that. Uh, zombie. Walking Dead. Description. Example. Walking Dead. Uh, blob. Uh, mutated. Collection of multiple human components. Um, oh, nuns. Uh, examples of this the blob, the thing. Cyclops. Larger than average. Human with one eye and a taste for blood. Examples. Uh, Futurama. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, what else have we got? Two-headed creature. Human form with two heads. I don't know that we need an extra uh, example of that. Uh, Minotaur. Uh, bo human body. 
with bull head. I'm trying to be very um very nondescript in terms of gender here when I do these things as well. Uh the doppelganger description evil twin um evil twin a version of someone that is evil uh that doesn't make sense an evil version of a good person Grendel Creature from the cave Um shoot, what's his name? Fuck Grendel. Um Beowulf, that's him. Creature from the cave, asked Beowulf. Freddy. Freddy Krueger. Of Elm Street. Jason is Jason Voorhees. Michael Myers is Michael Myers. Um, and then uh, examples are going to be a couple of these. Uh, Nightmare on Elm Street, Friday the... I think that's actually that. Uh, Michael Myers. Yes. Now, one of the reasons uh, doing these monster things is uh, is going to work really well with this semester. Is the semester starts in September, midway through the semester is October when uh, Halloween hits, and uh, it's right around the middle point of the semester. And so I'll have a, a ton of students kind of working on monsters around the time that uh, Halloween hits, which uh, I'm thinking would be a lot of fun. Uh, okay, what else have we got in here? Leatherface. Oh. Uh, I don't remember his actual proper name. Uh, but this is Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Massacre? How do you spell that? I think it might be A-R. Massacre. Nope. M-A-S-S. There we go. Massacre. Okay. Uh, what else we got? Um, so this one's going to be easy. This is going to be a chainsaw. Uh, Mike Myers is going to be a pumpkin. Which is going to throw people for a loop, I think. Um, because typically he doesn't have a pumpkin or anything like that. Um, but uh, there's a very famous pumpkin on the cover of the movie that he's from that I would like to do. Freddy um, is going to be his fedora. Uh, it might be a little too telling if I do the glove. Um, and so Fedora, and then Jason <laughs> will be a calendar, and uh, I'll actually go in circle Friday the thirteenth on the day on the calendar. Uh, that'll be fun. Uh, okay, anything else here? Um, Snowman. Uh, this is going to be uh, carrot vampire. Now, I want to stay away, I think, from the wooden stake because I think it's a little too obvious. Maybe I'll do garlic. Garlic cloves. Um, 
and a werewolf I'm gonna do a uh, full moon so I'm actually just gonna make a sphere of the moon and put it on a shelf somewhere and if you pick up the moon you become the werewolf I think that's that's pretty good uh scarecrow um scarecrow that's creepy uh the witch and the warlock um think of something to get them um toy reptile uh no 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 uh harpoon the creature from the black lagoon jack-o-lantern pumpkin head um that's going to be a uh, pumpkin now hold on if i do a pumpkin for that i probably shouldn't do a pumpkin for mike myers um oh i'll do uh so i'm gonna find some way of putting william shatner in here um, and the reason for that is that the mask Michael Myers wears in the movie, uh, I'll be uh, the mask that Michael Myers wears in that movie is a William Shatner mask that was spray painted white. Um, and the story I heard around that is, is that they, they had run out of time before they were going to start filming. And so they just went somebody to grab a mask and spray painted it. Um, okay. 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 We're getting somewhere somewhere um a gin which is an evil uh genie movie gin is a perfect example of this cave dweller um mutant that has never seen the light of day The decent excellent example of that. Okay, uh, human cat hybrid. I'm gonna come up with a name for these creatures. I want this to be the description. Um, human cat hybrid. What's a good monster name for a human cat hybrid? Um, Luffy. No. Need, uh... What did I call the reptilian one? Reptilius. Uh, maybe we'll go with Felinus. Felinus. And human bird hybrid. Balavius. There we go. Made up my own frickin' monster. Uh, human insect hybrid. Got two over here, uh, and this one too should go. Um, Mantius. I might as well just keep going with my naming convention. So Plantius, uh, and the insect one we'll call Sectius. Good enough. Not that anyone is going to see these names other than me. I might as well just call it Bob. Uh, Mimic takes the form of something familiar to lure you in. An example of that is the film Mimic. Um, but also. Um, Mothman. That's a good example of that. Um, being made of all things fire. Uh, Balrog. Example of that. Uh, being made of all things things ice uh i don't know nice creature for now mutant cyborg part machine 
Part evil. Uh, the board. Star Trek are a good version of that. Medusa. Snake lady. Uh, no, I don't want to put gender in here. Uh, snake person. <laughs> uh, examples of this. Uh, the Titans. I remember the Titans. So, at least I haven't seen that movie. I'm assuming there's no... Nothing like that in there. Uh, okay, mummy. Um, Egyptian. That's not how you spell that. Egyptian mummy. Uh, Egyptian zombie. I guess that's what that is. Uh, the mummy. Um, mutant. Deformed. Deformed, deformed, twins, deformed from radiation. Bum, bum, bum. Um, the hills have eyes. Reanimated Frankenstein's monster was dead. Brought back by science. Symbol Frankenstein. Mm. Frankenstein. Ah, Frankenstein. Uh, okay. Um, I'm going to put a mini for the mutant. I'm going to do a mini A bomb. Which I think works well for the radiation. The giant. Oversized for no reason but to kill. That's how you know I'm serious. Three L's. Um, how many examples of that? Um, I, mean, I just want to make something oversized for this guy. Uh, Hell Lord. Ruler of all evil. Going to remove gender here. Lady. Maybe it's a hell lady. Uh, ruler of all evil. Satan. Or Martha Stewart. I'm not sure which. Uh, okay. So we need a few things here. Uh, in terms of pickups, items that are going to be in the world for these people to, uh, to get. So the gin should be easy. That's going to be a magic lamp. Because, uh, duh. Uh, the cave dweller. I'll do a spelunkers. Spelunkers. Moment. Ah, oh, plenteous. Uh... Mini. Oh crap, what was the name? Um. Like a tiny version of the plant. Uh, in the little shop of horrors. Uh, Audrey too. That's what I'm gonna make. Oh, where are you? Plenteous mini Audrey too. And that'll work well for that. Uh, insectious. I need something insect like. Uh, Poltergeist. Ghost of a former human. Example. Poltergeist. It's good. Um, 
Ice cube tray. For the ice creature. Uh, for the fire creature. Uh, be a lighter, maybe? That works. Medusa. Mirror. Um, you pick up for a ghost. <laughs> Ghostbusters trap. Might be a little too on the nose. We'll see. Uh, something for the insect. Come back to that. And the mimic. Something that looks like something else. I might have to make something that looks like something else. That one's going to be tricky. I'm going to have to come back to that. Uh, mutant cyborg. Uh, part machine, part evil. Um, so this is something that is mutated, um, but also has cybernetic elements. Uh, I'm going to have to think on that one a little bit too. Uh, this is easy. This is a ball of yarn. Uh, and then the bird. Um, yeah, well, back to that one too. Uh, troll. Okay, let's see what we can do with a troll. So look at, whoops. Uh, examples of troll. Not internet troll. Um... Evil in front of troll. Apparently, there's a bunch of good ones. They have fluffy pink hair. Um, troll. That is creepy. Facing evil. All right. Um, small, no, I'm in the wrong thing. Description. Small, hairy, evil. What do you put on the ground for a troll? What could you pick up? Wooden club? Yeah, wood club is the better idea, maybe. Now yeah, let's put a wooden club in there. Roll. Wooden club. Okay. There's still a few more. A few more to go. Uh, I've got a big empty spot here. Forest spirit. Creature of the forest. Uh, two headed. Work for two headed. I'm like, my brain goes to two headed coin out of the gate, but that only works if you pick it up and see that it has two heads. It would be neat to have something that has two heads. I'll revisit that one too. Minotaur is going to be a toy bull or a bull statue, something of that nature. Um, Wraith.
Okay. So, technically, the word wraith is Scottish. It's a Scottish dialect word for the word ghost or spirit. Which is, uh, not exactly the definition I'm looking for here. Apparently, there's a lot of sci-fi races named Wraith. Which, uh, I guess, makes sense. It's a cool-sounding word. Um, so, this is a ghost or a spirit. Um, maybe I'll change Wraith. What was the other one I did? There was another one that was a ghost or something. It was the Poltergeist. Um, I don't want to have two versions of ghost in here. And so the Wraith, let's see, let's swap this out. Or make it more specifically a Ring Wraith. Hold of the Ring Wraith. That type of creature. Former royalty. Now eternally hunts. The ring. Okay, good enough. Uh, and that has solidified what's going to be here. The one ring. Uh, Lord of the Rings movies. Like so. Okay. Uh, I want something Bigfooty here without, again, being too on the nose. Um, my first instinct is to do a plaster cast of a Bigfoot uh, footprint. But uh, I think that's going to be, again, if anybody figures out what's going on, it's going to be a little too much on the nose that they'll know exactly what kind of creature that is. And, again, the whole point of this is that I don't, want anybody to uh to work out what's going on it's got to be all about confusion sleight of hand and i just need some kind of just need some kind of imagery fits along that again, no, I don't want to do that. Oh, you don't want to do the plaster cast. It's a little too on the nose. I saw a uh, a breakdown of the uh, the very famous, very first and only sighting of Bigfoot video. Um, that was very convincing for it being real. I don't believe Bigfoot is real, but holy crap. Um, this was an anatomical um, uh, expert uh, that was going through the footage and pointing things out, um, which included like fat sliding over tissue and uh, uh, even the fact that you can see breasts on it, which a costume would have. It's just absolutely insane. Um, the lengths that people go to to want to believe that this is real. Um, fascinating. fascinating. So, I'm not really, I'm just doing a search for, I'm just doing a search for Bigfoot here to see what kind of imagery comes up. Um, oh, how funny would this be?
back leaks. Yeah. Jack Lynch is totally what is going to sell that. Um, so if you're not aware, there is a series of ads for Jack Link's beef jerky called Messin' with Sasquatch, which has a series of campers or uh, outdoorsy people eating Jack Link's, um, eating Jack Link's uh, jerky while they mess with Sasquatch, and, like screwing with his bed or uh, that kind of thing. It's, it's actually, the commercials are absolutely hilarious uh okay scarecrow people so this one too um sounds like it should be pretty straightforward with putting a scarecrow's hat but i've already got a hat in here in uh in freddy i've got his fedora and so i don't know if i want to put two hats um it might be uh too much uh let me go take a look for Google images, see what they look like. Um, how do they call it? Scarecrow, scarecrow, P, P boy. And look at some imagery here to see what kind of things come up. Now, I did a whole series of scarecrows for uh, Maze when I made that game. Um, maybe, maybe a small bale of hay. Not exactly thrilled at using that. Raggedy end all. That might be it. Raggedy Andy. So there was this very famous toy from when I was a kid. Uh, two of them. Um, a male doll and a female doll named Raggedy Ann, Raggedy Andy. And they were just, you know, very uh, crudely put together children's toys. But uh, holy crap, in the right context, could they be creepy AF? This is Raggedy Ann on the left and Raggedy Andy on the right. And so I think if I made one of these and just had it sitting on the shelf somewhere, uh, that would get the message across that that is a scarecrow person. I, I give me give me chills down my back. Good, good, good sign. Good sign. Okay. Uh, where is my scarecrow people? This is gonna be Raggedy Andy. Uh, doll. That'll work. Uh, which warlock? Anyway. I kind of have, I've got enough here to start going anyway. Uh, so I'm going to save this and close it. Uh, I don't want to spend all day just making up a list. A, that makes for the world's most boring stream, and I'm surprised that two of you are even watching this. Um, what I want to do is set up my Unreal project and uh, and start laying in the, the foundation, um, no pun intended, of what is going to be the basement of the uh, the house that I'm going to use for this. Um, and so try and place out some uh, uh, scale and uh, and see how close I can get to something that feels right for wandering around. Again, I don't want, I don't want this to be so big that um, students are wandering around for 10, 15 minutes. I want them to kind of just already be there. Um, and so anyway, we'll see how this works. So I'm going to go and start a new project. I'm going to launch Unreal 4.25.1. And uh, we'll set this up. And while that's going, I'm going to go up. Look, large home floor plans. Now I want it to be able for a large enough house. Um, again, I don't, don't much care really what the floor plan looks like. Um, I just I just need it to be large. Um, I'm, I'm not going to be paying attention to the room layout or anything like that. If anything, I'll use the, uh, the placement on the walls to figure out where support beams would be in the basement. Um, but I just need kind of uh, a rough layout 
um, that I can use as kind of like, oh, this is this is the size and, and shape of the basement. Uh, it wouldn't suck if there was a, uh, a flight of stairs uh, in the house that would help me kind of place where they would go in the basement. Uh, if I could, I would like this to be a fairly large image. Um, the more measurements on it, the better. Not that I'm... Not that I'm all that choosy. Um, it's just one of those things that would help quite a bit. So here's a fairly large home. Uh, the thing that I like about this one is that... So I can see exactly where the support beams would go, uh, which is right along this center line here. Uh, and that actually gives me a fair amount of uh, of area here. Uh, this is a nice large image, 3125. So yeah, I'm going to use this. Same image as. So let's go and we're going to start populating my folder here with what I need. Uh, so what the hell did I call this? I called it, there it is, Cabin in the Woods. So I'm going to make a new folder here. This is going to be reference. And uh, we'll open that folder and save this as. Oh, can't type. Floor plan. And this back over here. Okay, so Unreal is open, and I want to create a new project uh, for games. Now, I don't actually need this to be uh, a, pr a proper first-person template, um, because I don't want the hands or the gun to be there. Um, now, it's not, you know, not really hard to get rid of those, um, but it would also make it a lot easier to bring them back in again um, if, uh, if I were to get rid of that. The other thing that I could do, uh, because I'm nearing completion on Scott, would be to use the third-person template... And, uh, and actually replace the character with the, the kid that I'm working on, which uh, I think is the way that I'm going to lean. I think that's going to sound like a much better way of working. Okay, next, uh, I'm going to go place this where I want it, which is going to be in my Unreal Projects folder. And I'm going to give it a name of Cabin in the Woods, like so. Uh, it's going to be blueprint, maximum quality, ray tracing. See, now this is... <laughs> this is where it would be a little bit more interesting to uh, to do things one way or another. Uh, I'm going to leave the ray tracing disabled. My system does support ray tracing, but because I'm making something that I'm going to give to a lot of people to play on their machines, uh, I, I'm not sure that all of their machines will support ray tracing. So I'm going to leave it disabled. Uh, and maybe what I'll do is enable it later and uh, and actually have a setup at the beginning that allows people to choose. Uh, we're going to do desktop and starter content. Everything else looks good. I'm going to create my project. Cabin in the Woods. Now there is a... Um, for anybody who's a fan of Evil Dead, um, there is a musical of Evil Dead. That I've seen with my wife twice, and it is absolutely brilliant. Um, it is a uh, just fantastic, fantastic comedy of a horror. Um, and it's this kind of musical where when you go to see it, um, you have to... Um, uh, they give you a, a raincoat because you get covered with blood. Uh, obviously not real, but um, still. Uh, okay, I'm going to start off by making a, a new level here. And I'll call it Cabin in the Woods map. Because I don't want the third-person example map. Uh, I'm going to load this. And I don't care if I save that or not. And settings and project settings. And let's go change a few things out of the gate. So project names, third-person template. That's a bad name. Cabin. Let's spell this nicely. Cabin in the woods. Um, project. Sure. Uh, project version one. Uh, I'm just starting, so that makes sense. Uh, description, copyright, da 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 da. Uh, let's go to maps. Modes. Uh, okay, editor startup map is actually going to be. Not 
any of those cabin in the woods and game default map is going to be cabin in the woods there we go so now it'll start on my map when i load it up which is good uh we're gonna keep the default game mode for now and uh, we're gonna change things kind of as we go out i don't need uh two three four player split screen uh, uh because we're not doing multiplayer um so I'll, I'll save these as is for now and uh i'm gonna go delete the map that is unneeded i got rid of its build content here too uh we'll save all even though my map is empty we'll just go and save it uh just to make sure that i've got uh i've got something kind of on the go here so let's go and block out first and foremost the uh the the map that i'm making um, so to do this, I need to go in the folder that the reference image has been saved to. Uh, this is Cabin in the Woods, reference. Here's the image here. I'm going to go to its properties and go and check out the resolution of said image, which is right here. I'm just going to move this on the other window so I can see it while I'm still in 3ds Max. And I'm going to create a plane on the ground without any subdivisions. And I'll just go and uh, scale this accordingly. So 1941 by 3125 now this is obviously going to be a ginormous map if i do it like this these are centimeters and so i'm obviously uh really 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 large in the uh, number of centimeters that are here uh but that's all right because what i'm going to do first i'm going to my top view here uh is get the scale set up so I may end up going to do this uh, inside of uh, uh, inside of Photoshop at some point. Uh, so there are measurements on everything, which is really, really nice. However, those measurements are in inches and feet, which is no bueno. Uh, I cannot have feet and inches in here. I'm going to be working in centimeters for everything that I do. Uh, and so it's going to be kind of in my... Uh, in my best interest here to not have that kind of thing going on um in order to uh in order to kind of fix this and so it looks like there's two flights of stairs here actually it looks like even a third going down here uh which is great that's going to give me lots of uh light bleed from the uh, from the upstairs down uh i think what i might just do um is just have an opening across there. But anyway, let's go. I'm going to use the garage here as my template. Uh, and only because it's nice and square. And I can see the measurements therein. And so hopefully... Look, there's an, an elevator. That's cool. I'm not doing an elevator. Um, so what the first thing I need to do is convert 26 feet um, into centimeters. And in doing that... the hell google's not giving me the proper answer okay this is 792.48 so the trick here the trick here is going to be to create uh another object i'm going to create a box here like this and i'm going to set the dimensions of this box to exactly the dimensions of that garage so 792 0.48. Okay, we're going to copy this and paste and paste. And this is now how big that garage is supposed to be. So I actually thought it was undersized uh, when I put this image in. And holy crap, am I wrong? Actually oversized. So I'm going to go and uh, put the box here in this corner. Let's try and line it up as one to one as I can get it. And I'll convert this to an edible poly, reset the X form, go to the pivot point, which I'm going to snap to that vertex. Then what I'll do is I'll grab my image plane, convert it to an edible poly, affect its pivot, and I'm going to align it to the pivot point of the box. Oak, oak, like so. Uh, now, in both instances, this, this is going to be in the wrong place. Uh, but I want pivot to pivot. 
and make sure yeah that'll work uh i'm gonna say okay and i'm gonna zero out the z just so that this thing's not off the ground and what i gotta do now is just scale this up and the nice thing is is that it's gonna scale to that corner so all i'm trying to do now is just get this corner to line up and so up, up. Dum, 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 dum. Up. there we go good enough so now I can close this and delete the box and I'm going to reset the transformations on this object and uh, I'm going to go and decide where I want the uh, the origin of my world to be which I'm going to try and place it you know somewhere in the middle of this thing so if I go to effect pivot and center the object it'll get close to this thing and I'm just going to make it get even closer like so. Then I'll put this at the origin. And now I've got a starting point for creating my, uh, my environment here. So uh, step one, save the hell out of this. Because now that I've got this all set up, uh, it's worth not ever having to do this again. So I'm going to make a new folder, which is going to be max files. Like so. And then this one is going to be, I'll call this the uh, structure. I don't know if there's a better name for this in the uh, environment um, modeling world. But uh, the structure is going to work for me. I'm going to switch my audio over here. I'm tired of wearing, tired of wearing my headset. Sometimes I feel like those headphones are bending my ears in okay so now the idea um is to gonna go and trace out the uh the size and shape of the room uh that this is going to take place in uh as well as start to set up my uh my posts that are going to be along the zero axis here uh which are gonna help hold the uh the entirety of the building up and so this is going to be done pretty easily here. I'm going to go into splines. Actually, I'm going to make my life a little bit simpler here. Um, I do this on occasion when working with uh, with images like this. I'm going to be staring at it a long time. Um, I have a uh, a very um, very very sensitive to light, and uh, when I'm dealing with an image like that, where I'm going to be staring at it a long ass time. Uh, having that many bright ass pixels in my face is going to kill me. Um, so I'm going to invert this and then I'm going to go to the levels and I'm actually just going to kill some of the whites. Um, and I don't want it to be pitch black. So I'm going to just bring it up a little bit just so that that's a little bit easier on the eyes for me. All I got to do is just save that and 3ds Max will auto update. Uh, I'm going to go and freeze the floor plan here so that I don't move it. So I'm going to freeze it and turn off frozen and gray so that I can't select it or move it, uh, which is going to be important here as well. So far, so good. In order to start drawing out the floor plan, uh, I'm going to do this with splines. And uh, I really just need a starting point. It doesn't really matter where, but a corner would be best. And I'm just going to kind of walk my way around the perimeter of the, uh, of the house. And I'm going to ignore the, uh, the outside buildings. Uh, so in this case, I don't, I don't need a garage, a garage, a terrace. Uh, these things are all kind of outside the building. So I'm going to kind of just keep it to the, the building itself. And we're going to bring this into Unreal and see just how useful this is going to be. Okay, so I'm gonna start here. I'll hold shift and bring it down, and down, and down. And I'm holding shift here to uh, enable me to get the 90 degree corners that are in this. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, uh, that there's going to be nothing but 90 degree corners in this. So again, I'm gonna ignore the, uh, the porch here. It's not part of this uh, structure either. And go here. And then this is where the stairs are going to go. So this over here. And again, 90 degree across. And then 45 again. Uh, and then up. Dining room. 
a weird bend in it like so. Go this way. Again, there's a porch here that I can ignore. I'm gonna go up. And because I'm not actually uh, really making this house exactly right, I'm making the basement of this house. I'm really just using this for layout uh, of, the, of the walls. Uh, again, I'm gonna ignore the nook and the terrace and go straight across to the sitting room, back up here, and close it off. So that's gonna give me a rough idea as to the floor plan. Uh, I'm gonna go into my edges, and there's a few things that I would like to correct. Um, first, we're gonna grab the Y position here of this. Actually, I'm gonna reset the X form. This actually works correctly. I'm gonna grab the Y position here and paste it in here. Just so that that is uh, 90 degree corners there as well. And then um, I'm gonna go fix this as well. So I wanna make sure that this is as straightened up as it can be. I don't need to put this 45 uh, in here. In fact, it would probably make a little bit more sense if I just closed it. Um, but the thing I like about this is the, the stairs go around that corner. Um, you know what I'm gonna do? Is I'm gonna not do it that way. I'm gonna bring my wall out here. And I'm actually just gonna make a square corner. Uh, I have no need to make that octagonal shape. Okay. That's not too bad um, with everything that's going on. Uh, so the next thing I'm going to do is try and figure out um, how high I should make the ceiling in the basement. And... Uh, It looks like eight feet is what most people prefer. I was looking at the, some some internet Googles. Uh, okay, so let's do uh, eight. That no that in cm. Turn this off for a moment. So 243, I'm just copying a number down here, uh, which is the height of the walls that I'm going to achieve here. So let's turn off control vertices, and I'm going to extrude this, and the amount is going to be that. So if you want a way of gauging uh, how big my environment is going to be, this is an eight foot tall wall, which is uh, pretty pretty mental. Um, if I go and make a, uh, a box in here, and let's go play with its dimensions. So I'm gonna make the box 32, 45, 180. And there is a six foot tall individual so you can see that does that does fit with what i'm getting uh if i'm gonna make scott tracker the kid that walks around here he's actually even a little bit shorter than this so that's it's not bad but i think i'm gonna run into issues with the camera and such if i do this and uh maybe i'm gonna upgrade the height of this thing let's undo a bunch and uh, let's go back, the extrude, and let's see what happens if I do a nine foot ceiling. Let me go create, actually, you know what, I'll use the biped here because it'll be a little bit easier to uh, see him. So I'm gonna set his height to 182. Let 
That's not too bad. Get the camera inside the room and kind of look around. Yeah, that might work. Okay, I'm going to give it a test. So the test that I'm going to do, I'm going to convert this to an editable polygon and delete the roof. And I'm going to flip all the interior polygons so they point inward. And I'm going to export this. Export selected. Project. Cabin in the woods. Cabin, 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 cabin in the woods. I need a new folder now for this type of asset. This is a FBX asset. And in here, we're going to call this proxy floor. Like so. Now I can jump over to Unreal and we can start bringing this in. So I'm going to go to my content folder. Uh, there's already geometry and some meshes in here, which I don't really care about too much. Um, uh, this is all part of the uh, the starter content and stuff that loads in here. So what I'm going to create is uh, not a geometry folder, but a meshes folder, which is where I put my own stuff. So this happens on occasion. Uh, I misspelled this, and it won't let me get rid of that misspelling unless I misspell it again and correct it like so. Okay, so in here, I'm going to import that proxy. Uh, I'll go to the right place here. This, cabin in the woods, FBX, and the floor proxy. Make sure I'm not scaling anything. I want to make sure I am combining my materials or my meshes. Uh, I don't want to import materials, uh, not create materials. Do not import textures. Sure, we are combining our meshes. And yeah, that's fine. So I'm going to place this in here and move it to the origin. Now the placing at the origin is going to make sure that this is exactly where it is in 3ds max quite nice kill the grid because it hurts my eyes i'm gonna go into lights and i'll bring a directional light in here i'm gonna make sure there's collision on this um which i'm not i won't know apparently there is collision uh, it's not where i am Let me bring, I want to be able to see the world a little bit more here. Uh, exponential height fog into the world. So I can see what's going on. Let me turn the grid back on. Okay, so the grid is where I expected it to be. That means that it's probably the collision mesh that was created for this. Um, which, uh, in the collision, it would have been uh, gener generating it based off these holes. Um, which is not what I want to do. I want to use uh, Complex Collision is Simple. Save that. Uh, if I go and take a look at the collision volume here, um, Complex, there. It's actually using the Geo, which is what I want. Save that up. I should now, there we go, land inside the world. Okay. So again, I want to kind of get a feel here for the space and size of this room. The kid's not going to be able to jump, um, so I'm not going to worry about that. And he's not going to be able to run. I'm just going to have walk enabled here, uh, which means it's going to be a much slower than this. So maybe in order to, uh, to correct that, I'll kill the running on this guy so that it already goes to a walk. But I just want to see how big this environment's going to be. You know, I want to get a gauge for how long someone can spend walking around this environment uh, with all of these these doodads everywhere. And now I'm going to get rid of the grid permanently because, god damn. Uh, okay, so let's go and break uh, in the blueprint this guy's running ability. 
Uh, I'm going to do this through a couple of means. Uh, I don't actually want to do it in here. Uh, I want to go into his animation blueprint. Animation, animation blueprint. And we're going to go break that run. Uh, that one, jump start, event craft. There we go. That's the in air. Uh, where is... Event graph? Jump loop, jump start, event graph. There is... Update, is in air, is in air, speed setting. It's this blend space. Actually, I can probably just edit the blend space to do this. Um, yeah, let's go. Let's go edit the blend space. There's the blend space. Um, so what you have here uh, is the ability to uh, go from a walk to a run. So there's three animations in place here. There's an idle, which is him standing there breathing. And then as you start moving up on the thumbstick, it starts blending out that idle. You can see he's taking little baby steps. And when you hit this speed here, we're now fully on the walk animation. And then as you still continue to press up, you can see that he's going to start blending that walk animation. I'm going to get a little bit more giddy up in his step here. Until he's actually full out running. And so that blends that animation all the way out, uh, which is really, really nice. But what I want to do is delete the run and move the walk all the way up. So that no matter what, the fastest he goes is walking. So if I go and play this again, the fastest he goes now is a walk. And I believe he's sliding, so I want to set his player speed, uh, which is going to be in the animation blueprint. And uh, get velocity from the pawn, set the vector length, and then set it to the speed right here. Uh, so this is going to get set uh, somewhere else. Rippers and jump, jump start, graph. There's something else that I'm missing from here. I don't see. Uh, I, don't, I don't see any of it there. Anim graph? There it is. Default state machine. Idle run. This guy. Uh, that's the blend that I just edited. And this is the speed. Um. Uh, I'd like to go and edit that speed so that it doesn't get too high. Let me go see. Actually, if it's here. Default speed is zero. Vector length. I think it's moving too quick. Uh, there's a movement speed somewhere. Setting, uh, project settings. Search for speed in here. Uh, here's per second. Your speed. No, it's not in here. Settings. World settings. Not in here. Most intriguing. Anyway, I can edit that later. But yeah, I get the sensation that his feet are sliding across the ground. He's still moving at the speed of a run, even though he's walking, uh, which is making things look very broken. So we're gonna we're gonna have to correct that at some point. Let's see if I just have the speed uh, that's here. So there's the vector length, and I think all I'm gonna do is just take this and divide it by two. We'll just cut his speed in half. Dave. We should be much, much slower now. 
He's still really fast. Oh, I wonder if this is actually just the play speed and that he's still moving. Yeah, that's what's going on. Okay, so I'm actually editing completely the wrong thing. This is just the animation play speed. I don't want to... You don't want to mess with that. We can have that just do exactly what it was doing before. Uh, what I need to do is I need to find where his uh, where his run is kept, uh, which is where is that now? Game mode. Uh, oh, might actually be in here. Um, somewhere. Let me look this up. I forget where they keep this. Maybe four. Uh, Movement speed. At where that is handled in the engine. Um, one. This one. Speed here. Apparently not. There's. Jump, jump, jump. Intertech. I'm going to get rid of the jump, too. Uh, hmm. Odd. I thought it was in here. Uh, okay. Movement input. That's good. Move forward, move right. That's good. Uh, gamepad input. Press R to reset VR orientation. We're not doing anything VR, so I can get rid of that. Mouse input, look, jump. We don't need the jump. So don't do it. Uh, touch input. Doing anything with touch. We can get rid of that. Okay. Mouse, gamepad, movement. All of this is correct guy down here with the forward vector add movement input add movement input character movement component where are you mesh character movement there it is in here there should be a speed there it is Max walk speed. Let's bring that to 300. Save this. Now let's take a look. Okay, not bad. I still want to see if his feet are sliding on the ground. Um, and so to do that, go back to the content folder here. Uh, third person, third person, third person, meshes, mannequin, geometry. Okay, so I'm going to create a new folder called uh, textures and materials. And in here, I'll make a new material. This is going to be just a, a test mat. It's going to be a, a checker pattern. Checker pattern. Uh, let's go and grab a uh, texture coordinate. Goes in here. A scalar. Which I'll call tiles. So go in here. So go in here. And let's give it more than none tiles. Let's default it to five. There we go. I'm just gonna make my own checkerboard texture here that I can put as a test on things. And I'm going to create a material instance for this called material instance underscore checks. And I'll put that on the ground here. Uh, yes. So there is a problem, which is there's no UVs on this mesh. So we'll go here. I'll hit edit. And we're going to do mapping, flatten mapping. Yes, that's fine. Oh, why are you crooked? Flatten mapping. Not supposed to do anything crooked. Uh, orient to edges is. Button by polygon angle, break. Uh, 
uh, rotate somewhere is behind the edge. Just brush nonsense. How do you do this again? Somewhere. Yeah, rotate. Okay, fine. Find it. We'll do it the fast way. I'm going to grab this and planar map from above. And grab all of this and pack it. Convert. Export selected. Proxy floor. Back into Unreal. Back into meshes. And we'll re import this. And voila! We now start to get our materials. Open out the right way. Textures materials. Go into the instance of the one I just made. And go and increase the number of tiles here to 35. Seventy-five, one, fifty. Okay, good with that. The only thing I uh, also want to do is that is start contrast is hard on my eyes. Uh, so I'm going to go in here, and uh, we'll use this as an alpha mask into here, and then I can just put a couple of colors in here. So I'm going to make a dark gray and a light gray let's actually we'll bring them closer together point 45 point 54 still really point 21 Point twelve. Better. Uh, let's also throw this into the roughness. Let's this out of the roughness. Okay. Save it. It's a little bit better. Still not getting the values that I want. Here. So I'm going to subtract 0.75. Also going to clamp this just to make sure. Breaking in. Okay. So post processing and eye adaption. Better. Okay. Get eye adaptions back off. So he's still definitely sliding. Let's go into that directional light. Turn back. His value. Might be too much. A little bit better. I'm going to put a skylight in instead of a... Turn off the directional light and see if that helps. Okay. Delete the directional light. Amazing how much that eye adaption is doing what it's doing. Um, I don't have a post process volume. So, turn it on. That eye adaption is still kicking ass. Let's go into the third person blueprint. Go into the viewport, grab the camera. Let's go see if there's any of that post-process nonsense going on in here. Boom. Nothing. Let's see. 
find option is in here. No. Closure off, bloom off. Out of vibrations, everything's off. So it's not coming from here. Okay. So there's that. Uh, where else? My post process one. Hmm? Everything's on. Nothing's on in here. Okay. Okay, let's find some more post process settings, world settings. No post process in there. Project settings. There is some post processing being done here. That stuff's okay. Exists in more than one place, um, which is the crappy part of this. I'm going to turn it on in the end. Um, but uh, there's just too many places that it exists for now. See if I can find this. It'll help me get my lighting a little bit better, too. I'm not constantly fighting the flare-ups and darkening that constantly happens with this. Um, in here... No... Somewhere else that I'm missing. I just sworn it was in the character camera. The option's on. I hit play. It's on. Still off. Let's go in the post-process volume. See if I can't find something in here. Uh, let's try those pain here. Post-process volume. Let's look for brightness. Minimum brightness. Maximum brightness. This is probably going to help. Let's just set these both to one. One to one. And now... Shouldn't blow out my lighting. Yeah, that's better. Uh, I'm going to put my directional light back in. So I'm still getting foot sliding here, which I would like to avoid. Again, it's not the end of the world. Once I get the kid in here, like it's going to be a totally different ball game. Um, but it would be nice to uh, be able to get this to a point where um, I am happy with the way that he's moving. So too fast means slow him down. Goes down to the hundred. Not that it matters. He's not going to be crouching on my watch. And again, let's hit play and see if we can get his feet to stop sliding. Let's 
Still quite a bit of sliding. Must be a really, really slow speed. Drop that to a hard. Oh, I might have got it too low. That might have been what's going on. Get this exactly right. Let's try to 50. What I can do is I can actually set this up on a slider. Then. help if I can actually see his feet. But yeah, that still looks like a little bit of sliding. It's a little bit better. And again, spacebar is not going to work. He's not going to jump. Uh, all I can do is walk. So good. This gives me a little bit of an indication here what it's going to be like walking around the environment. Again, I'm going to probably manually tweak the walk to make it even slower. Um... So that's not a brisk march through the streets. But anyway, that'll work for now. So let's save everything here. And now we're going to head back to 3DS Max. And uh, I need to put the, uh, the ceiling on here, which means I'm going to need to have to put the stairs in. Um, once I have stairs in place, it'll make my life a little bit easier. Um in terms of figuring out what I'm going to do where. So there's a flight of stairs here, a flight of stairs here that is a curl around kind. Um, and there's a flight of stairs here, which looks like a smaller curl around kind. I think I'm going to ignore that one. Um, but I will do this one and this one. I think they'll, uh, they'll, they'll both be pretty important. So um, let's go look at stairs. And see if I can figure out how tall a stair is supposed to be. In terms of uh, setting this up correctly. Mm. Okay. Okay, so the typical stair height this would be about seven and a half inches. <laughs> What's the hell? I just need some number. Uh, okay, let's go. Let's see if I can get some numbers here to be able to start plugging away some stairs. There we go. Found one with numbers, finally. Finally. Got one with numbers. It looks like we're going seven inches high and 11 inches in the run, or the seven in the rise and 11 in the run. Okay, uh, seven in CM. No.
Okay, 17.78. 17.78 is the height. Let's make, I'm going to make a box here the right size. Okay. That size I don't care about for now. The height is 17.78. I read that correctly. And 27.94. Okay. So that is the right size to be a singular step. Uh, and I just made this one large so I can track which one it was. Okay, now that I have this sorted out, edible, oh, where'd it go? Where'd you go, where'd you go, where'd you go? Edible poly, grab these vertices here, and I'll bring them back here. This is going to go right to the wall. And now that I have that as a step, now that I know the height, what I'll do is go in my pivot point, turn on snaps, and snap it to this corner. And with snaps on, I'll do this. And we're going to make copies, I don't know, like a dozen or so. Not tall enough to get out of the basement yet. So I'll hold shift and make another one. And let's add another four. Okay. So there. That is how we get out of the basement steps. So the nice thing about this is that I can actually see how many steps get me out of the basement, which in this case is 16. And turn off my snaps, go to the top, and what I'm going to do is hold shift and bring this over here. And these are going to get wider. And I need to split this up eight and eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. These ones are going to move over here. Over here, come on, you. Don't move. Oof. So let's do this. Like so. I'll get them kind of close enough. Those should now. Match up with the other set. Like so. So I now have a couple of sets of stairs. I'm going to freeze this. Convert this to an editable poly. I'm going to isolate it. Grab the bottom. Attach everything. Reset the X form, affect the pivot. And I'm going to snap it to here. And we're going to export this as proxy stairs. Export selected. Proxy stairs. Now, because I'm not making uh, modular stuff, I'm not making um, the components that I would need to build a lot of buildings. I'm making one singular everyday building. Because of that, I can afford to do things like um, put my stairs pivot at the origin, even though they're not, um, which is going to allow me to do things like this. If I go and grab my stairs now and bring them in, uh, again, I want to make sure it's not bringing building materials. Uh, it's importing the materials. Everything should be good here. Oh, uh, there's no UVs on these. I don't care. 
Uh, but if I go and place them at the origin in here, they go to where they're supposed to go. And so gives me a, uh, a better feeling for the map. There's some kind of ugly... Oh, there one collision on them. That's what it is. We're going to go down to collision. And collision. And we are going to say use complex. I should probably make collision for them. But there you have it. I could go all the way upstairs if there was an upstairs. Wink. And I now have that portion laid up. So again, I'm going to make it so you can't go up the stairs. I don't need uh, I don't need that that headache involved in this. Okay, um, let's get out of here. And I'm going to go look at some images of uh, old basements here so I can kind of get a feeling for what I'd like to do in terms of the ceiling. I want it to be exposed and... Uh, I want it to be ex exposed and not very, uh, not very clean looking, and so a lot of kind of open board, if you will. Uh, I want to be able to see maybe the uh, the struts that hold up the uh, the floor above. It's funny. I'm uh, I'm googling some here. I'm look doing a look for old uh, dirty basements and. Uh, <laughs> The ones that I'm like, ooh, that one's nice. They're all 3D. Um, every time I see one that I think is exactly uh, the way I want it to look, uh, it's a 3D model. Maybe instead of old, dirty, I'll do a band. Um, and see if that gives me... Oh, that does give me a lot more. On a stock photos. Okay, so it looks like the support beams are going to be next uh, structurally. And that's going to be easily done by just going to the top view here. So I'm going to put support beams kind of at key places along here uh, and then run a board along top of them. So um, the support beams. I think I'm going to end up making these things out of wood. Or maybe I'll duplicate the ones that are here and make them brick. Yeah. I think that's going to work. Again, I'm looking at reference here and uh, I want to get to a point that this looks structurally believable. Okay. I like the look of that. Okay, so beams, 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 beams. So I'm going to use this guy as kind of a frame of reference for the beam here. And let's see how big that beam is in centimeters. So it's a 40 centimeter by 54 centimeter. So that's way too big. That's half a meter, um, which I think is going to be way too big for this. Uh, I think it should be closer to 10 by 10. No, that's going to be 20 by 20. I remember I'm working in centimeters here. 20 by 20. 30 by 30. Okay. Okay. 
So in order to save my eyes, all the fluctuating here, I'm going to unfreeze all and take the floor, drop it down and freeze it again. Okay. So let's bring uh, Mr. Fancy Pants here inside. And I just want to see how big the beam is next to him. Um, because that'll be of importance here too. This over here. Yeah, I think I think that's believable as a beam. Okay, so I'm gonna convert this to an edible poly. I've got my walls here that'll give me the height of the building. It's gonna be this. And I'll grab this. Let's go paste it. That's now the height of the walls. And I need to drop it down 30 units now. This is going to be 44. And I'll convert this to an edible poly. Um, I'm going to my top view here. That's fine like that. And I'm going to go put these at a few key locations here. So should be one here. Actually, what I might do... is go and bring a copy out here and I'll make four copies. And then what I can do, is select them all, bring them back in. So they're in a position that I think will help hold the basement up. I've kind of made them all equal distance apart here so that you can walk in between them without issue. And we'll convert those only edible poly. The next thing I wanna do is take another one of these and rotate it 90 degrees, like so, and go and move it up here. Now, I should still have the number in here. And I gotta drop it down 15 units, I think. This might still be 44 units. Yeah, and then I've gotta move it up 15. That would be 59. Oh, back here. 59, there we go. I'll just kind of move that over there. I can get more accurate here when I'm doing other components, other parts of this. The idea is going to be to make some really big ass boards that run along the roof, or the ceiling rather. Like so. And I think even that I need to drop down. I'm going to go and attach all this together. Let's take this. Attach. Okay. I'm going to take this beam. Rotate it. Arbitrarily for no reason. Again. 90 degrees. Like so, as a new element, and I'll leave this at the full size for now. But this has got to move up another 30 units, which we think is 89. I'll have to bring the whole thing down again. Again, before I move that. I actually want to make these beams taller to make it more look like they're more load bearing. So where are we now? Three. Let's add another 20 to this. Double it in height. 30. 
There we go. Okay. So I got me some big ass beams that I can start to place. Start this one right next to the stairs. That helps identify where the stairs are going to be. And then I'm going to move these over. Let's see where I've got that in X. Let's make it nice and clean. There's 1400. And what I'd like to do. Try and keep a gauge on how far I'm making these things. Maybe a meter and a half. Okay. Okay, and undo. Turn this on. Turn the grid on. Turn the snaps on. Snap to grid. Move it over. Meter. 40. Come on, you. Snap. Snap. Cool. Meter 60. That was less than useful. So what I'm going to do, let's do this a different way. I'm going to detach this. Effect, pivot only, centered object. I'm going to go to tools, and I'm going to go to the array mesh. And we'll just array this goddamn thing. So I'm going to be moving in X. So this is the incremental value here that I want to move. Uh, let's turn on preview. We're going to go negative in that increment. So I'm said this is centimeters here so if i do 150 that is a meter and a half i can see how big a meter and a half gets me uh i then go and increase the number in the array that got me less than uh less than halfway there that again think one Fewer than what I have, or like so. Okay. So now I've got some floor joists. I'll grab this one. I'm going to hit attach. These are all instances. Try that again. Okay, all the floor joists are attached. The only thing left to do now is cut them to size. Which I'll do by just grabbing all the vertices. Let me make sure my snaps is off again. Oh, angle snaps. So we'll come in. Leave those ones behind. Come in. Those ones behind and come in. Same thing on this side. I'm going to come in. Again, I'm going to have to cut the floor joists away from where the stairs are, because it's not going to make a lot of sense to have them there. Um, but I'll leave them there for now. Come in some more. It's going to be this one. Some more. Those ones. Those ones. Some more. That. At there. there. Okay. So these ones are going to have to get cut in a different way here. I'm going to have to build some kind of support structure um, if I'm going to cut across here to hold them up. That's probably going to involve grabbing another beam like this 
and bringing it over. So what I'll do, shift this, live beside the stairs. Like so I'll sink it behind the stairs like so. And that's going to put it right in there. So I think I'm going to actually separate two flights of stairs here. I'll do this in the top view. Right now, I've got them pretty close to one another in this gap here. And so what I'm going to do is I'll grab the vertices from the one, put them back where they belong, put them over here. Uh, actually, just get them as close as I can. Scale. So that this is going uniformly apart, like so. Okay. Grab the beam. Back in the middle here. And there. That's not going to interfere with those steps, and it won't interfere with those steps. And then I can, what I can do is I can put another cross beam, this one. On top of that guy. Okay. Like so, and I can use that to then hold the uh, the steps. So now, with that, done like that, one of these guys again, take this, back on top of that B. So that we should have your way up, find your head, and then again, a clear way up from there. There would be some kind of a wall going from here, up, but I'm not going to worry about that just yet. Also, you probably don't need the very last step here, but work on that as we go. So, I'm going to export this now. See what I have selected here. Not what I wanted. That's what I wanted. Isolate this guy. And I'll just attach everything together. Try that again. And we'll call it floor joists and supports. We're going to affect its pivot point, throw it to the origin, reset its X form, and export it. This is proxy. Joists. Game. Into Unreal. Bring in the joists. I'm going to turn off the... Uh, don't do this. Uh, I'm going to make sure that it's not generating collision on me here. Uh, Auto-generate collision. There we go. Import. Bring that into the scene, put it to the origin, click, and play. Yeah, that's about the size of this that I want. Yeah, I think that's going to work quite nicely. So it's definitely starting to feel uh, claustrophobic and shut in, uh, which is kind of what I want from this. Boom. And again, you can see now where like the different sections of the rooms are going to be and how stuff's going to be structured. Um, I may need to take the support column here 
and put another one with another joist. Another joist right here. Kind of coming out from that wall. Um, I've got one here right now and one on this side, which those make sense. In fact, uh, the one that I've got here, it looks like I should probably bring this wall back to line up with the joist. As it doesn't make a lot of sense to have that wall going inside the joist like that. Uh, probably the same thing here, right? There, are, there would either be a support beam here, or this wall would be further back. But very good, very good. Uh, I think this is going to do nicely. So we'll kill that. I'm going to go back into Max here again. Uh, that wasn't Max. That also not Max. What the hell's going on with my mouse? There we go. Oh, god damn it. Max. Uh, there we go. Unhide. So, let's go see what I can do with this wall here. Blink. This wall. And yeah, I think this is going to make more sense if I bring it back. And the joist. There. Which will help the, uh, the joist make sense. And then the same thing with this one. I'm going to bring this one back to behind that joist as well. Okay, so with that done, the joist needs to be longer. Like so. Uh, those guys are fine. These ones. I'm going to come out this way. And over here, so again, I wanted another joist across here. Or beam, as it were. What I'll do is I'll select this. I'll shift and bring it over. In the top view. We'll bring it in. Put it in about the right place here. This guy is not needed. This can go back in. That one's fine. That's all fine. So yeah, it's giving me kind of this mini room over here, which is good. There was something over here. These guys. Okay, so file export selected. Replace the joists. And Unreal. Bring them back in. Yeah, that's going to work quite nicely now. Now I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna go bring my wall up a little bit too. Um, and match it with the top of the joist here. So if I can move, there's my height, and we'll grab the outer wall, border, set its height, and cap it, and export it. Floor. And actually, before I do that, I'll bring that in. We'll go take a look at what it does. It's going to be black. Because now no light should be able to get in. Well, light can still get in because the, the normals are broken. Uh, because this has no depth. 
but I'll fix that in a moment. So what I want to do now is I want to figure out where the basement windows are going to go. So the basement windows are going to be important because they're going to be the main source of light. Um, <clears throat> and I'm looking to have just these tiny little openings in the uh, against the ceiling here that I can have them open. Uh, now I've put a joist all the way along this wall. So I'm not going to put in any of that wall, but I should put one over here somewhere. And I want to get their height right too. I'm trying to think of where this would be in regards to the uh, the opening that's there. I think kind of below the joists is normal, not in between them. So I'm gonna go do that now. So what I want to do is kind of pick out where they're going to go. So as I mentioned, I want one to go over here. Uh, this is going to be kind of a given. And uh, I'm going to need to set these things up correct. So what I'll do is I'm going to make one first. Uh, and I'm going to do this with the character in view. So I can see kind of how big I want them to be. I think I want them to be about that size. Um, convert this to an edible poly. One polygon, invert and delete. So I just have one polygon now for this window. And uh, in terms of the height of this thing, I'm going to bring it just below that joist. I don't want it to touch the joist, but just kind of near enough to it. And uh, go around here to the back. See? Over here. So we're going to bring this over here, and it would be nice if it was centered in the wall. So I'm going to grab the wall here and find out where in X it is. So that I get its middle point. And then I'll grab the window. Back pivot center. And I'll just paste that in the same location. Okay, and now if I go here, select the floor, start naming stuff here while I'm going. So I'm going to use the, uh, the cut tool. What I'll do instead, just grab this and inset it. So. And in the front view, we'll make this match. Get it kind of close enough. Okay, close enough. And we've got one. That's not really as low as I want it. Here. Okay. One basement window. And if that's all I'm going to get on that side, it's not going to give me a hell of a lot of light. So maybe what I'll do is I'll place two on this side. Like so. In order to do this, Need to add a few more cuts. How did I just cut?
make any sense. Okay. That's in here. And then... them over. That one's fine. It's fine. I can take two polygons and inset them. And now start making them. Match the windows. That something like that, and I'm gonna get them far more accurate once I get the final shape of this thing built. But that's gonna give me three input sources of light on this side of the room. I'm gonna put one, I think, on either side of the stairs as well. So here and here. And we'll grab the template. I'm gonna have to move them all up to the same height here eventually. That one's fine. Actually, see where I place the damn things. Okay, that one there. Back to this polygon mode. Okay, close enough. And now all the lights are uh, light sources are going to be on that side of the room. I've got a big long beam here, so I can't put one there. Uh, but I'm going to put one right by the stairs, I think, just to let a little bit more light in over here. So again, we'll do an inset. Should be able to actually match this to the other windows. That close enough. And make it match oh, this way. Okay, close enough. This is going to go over here. Over here. Okay, so the only other thing that I want to do now is just make sure that I've got them all about the same height, uh, which is a fairly easy thing to do. I'm just going to grab the vertices at the bottom of the windows, all of the bottom of the windows. And uh, let's do this. Paste them all in here. Align them to Z. Grab the top, copy its position, and grab all the tops. And I'm up to Z that back in okay so that should now let light back in the only other thing that I want to do with this is uh, give it the thickness to prevent light from coming in against the normals I'm going to shell it and make sure it is the outer amount that's shelled not the outer 
inner amount, which is the outer amount, and I'm going to straighten my corners because screw you. And this manageable, which I'll now file export selected, and we'll overwrite the floor. So when I get this into the engine now, should drastically change the lighting in here. And we should start getting what looks like a lot more of a uh, we'll build the lighting. Preview, sure, build the lighting only. We'll see how quickly the new machine can build the lighting. Well, there's not much in the scene, so that's of very little use to me. Uh, also, my light maps. There's no UVs on most of this thing, so light maps aren't going to make a lot of sense. Let me go and hit play here. Okay. It is, it is giving me that dank kind of dark effect that a basement would give me. An unlit basement. Um, and again, there is light coming in from some of these things. Uh, I'm going to go do my UVs here again uh, on this thing. Uh, so again, I'm just going to grab all the polygons. Turn this and do a mapping, flatten mapping. Doki. And straighten this thing out. Why? Always does this. Uh, rotate this. Wait. I don't do that. This soft selection. That's the brush. Somewhere in in here is a, a line to edge. Wait. Eight, adding rescale element group. Remember where the hell it is in 3 Max. I spent so much time in the last little while doing my UVs inside of uh, Maya that where all of these tools are. Uh, edge, edge, rescale. How the hell do you do this? Transform. That's the pivot points. That was useless. Uh, okay, screw it. Z plane. Relax it. Add everything. Back in here, let's build the lighting again. So I may have to go in and, uh, and angle the directional light so that I can actually ensure that some of the light beams are traveling through some of the windows. Um, though probably what I'm going to do is build the, uh, the ground dig out that's here. So even if you see outside the window, all you're going to see is corrugated metal, which um, I think will fix things a little bit in terms of the quality. So there is... Where is that? Yeah, it's not letting a lot of light in, but it is letting light in. So let's go and add in a single light bulb here. I'm going to go and tint this. That incandescent in color. We'll move this up somewhere to where it might be. Build the lighting again. Now, one light bulb does not give off a lot of light. Let me go amp up the quality of my light. Let's 
Let's see if this does any better. Yeah, still not much. It's not really giving off too much. Now, it, it is worth noting that this checker pattern that we're seeing on uh, the stuff here is my is my broken pattern. Um, if I go and take this and remove this, uh, we will get a lighter color on things uh, that will help bounce that light a little bit further. Let's switch over to game mode. Will help even further. It's not too bad with a single light bulb in places, and so I may kind of strategically place the lights so that, uh, you know, maybe there there are a couple of lights in here. Um, I also, I think I nerfed the, I don't know, it's, it's still the way it should be. Um, let's go play with that directional light. Up inside the room here. And I think the first thing that I'm going to want to do is rotate it so that it comes in more than two windows. If I do it on a 45 or so, or a 40 or so, um, that'll help a lot, because I'll get light coming in each of the windows on that side of the room, uh, which is going to be better. Not perfect, but better. Odd, but even with that rotation, I'm not seeing light spots on the floor. But uh, it could be the resolution of my light map too, which I think is just set to 64 for this whole floor. Not too bad, not too bad. Now I do have to populate this with a, a full repertoire of uh, of items, making it uh, full screen here on this, uh, making it feel more basement like. So I want to make an old beat up, decrepit couch that I'm going to put somewhere. Uh, I need uh, laundry facilities, so I'm going to make a washer and dryer that are going to be beat to hell. Um, what else is going to go down here? I'm going to put a wash basin, which is going to go over here. Uh, and then wooden shelving is going to be in most places. Uh, I want to just kind of completely cover the, th the, the room in wooden shelving. Because I've got to hide those 50 objects kind of everywhere in the room. And so that'll be, uh, that'll be important. Definitely feels basement-like. Oh, there's some of that light coming in. It's really shallow, that angle. upstairs oh now I'm stuck and I don't have a run okay not too bad um, I'm still not sold yet on doing the lights um, I think if I do do them, I'm going to make them faulty so that they, uh, oh, oh. the light bulb here. The light bulb shift over here. Right when you come down the stairs. So we'll see what this is like with uh, with three bulbs in location now. And see if it uh, needs to be something a little bit better, easier to see.
Yeah, that definitely lights up this whole area here, having one bulb there. So that my worry is that I put too many lights in here that we lose that um, that darkness of uh, the dankiness of the basement. I don't think I'm losing it with three lights. I think we're looking good with three lights here. Still really dark near where I'm going to put that, our basin. I think I'm going to put the laundry facilities here. Not sure what's going to occupy this any room area here. Maybe an old workbench or a workout bench. Some free weights. An old bicycle might be neat to throw in here. I essentially have to make junk. That's what I'm going to do now. The more junk I make, the more this is going to look legitimate. Um, I also closed off the ceiling here, so I can't, I can't get out. Um, and so I'm going to have to make a hole for the uh, where the stairs go and put a door there. Because uh, actually, I don't, I don't actually want this to go anywhere. And then I'm just going to put a bunch of cardboard boxes down here. Which I think will fill in that gap really nicely. I don't know what's going to live here. There's another, there's another little alcove here beside the stairs. That might be a good place to put a, a couple of bikes. And I'd like to set the shelving up to make it feel a little bit like a maze down here. I don't really know which way you should be going or where uh, anything. I'm pretty pleased with this. Let's see, I'm going to make, um, save my changes to this. I'm going to go into 3ds Max here. And let's save the changes to this. So that I uh, have it again. If anything happens and it were to crash. But yeah, so I've got to cut the hole in the, uh, in the floor here to allow for the stairs to go up. And I'm just literally going to put a door here. Um, so that hole should probably, and again, I can probably this with the uh, the beam here run the beam straight across it'll actually give me the uh a clue as to whether or not i got the stairs in the right place in fact i'm gonna move the stairs i think this is gonna make a little bit more sense i'm gonna move the stairs back here let me just so my reason for thinking this is that it's going to make more sense for cutting the hole in here. And I can take that joist now, extend it to the room here, or out of the wall. Like that. And it makes sense now that it's holding up the wall and you would walk under it to go up the stairs. So... That'll give me the ability to then just cut out from the joist back or in between the two joists and then put that door up there. Because again, the other stairs over here, the roundabout stairs, they just kind of worked already uh, somewhat. I should probably, while I'm at it, let's take this guy. Shift. Bring him back here. in the top view because it's easier. All I'm going to do here is just build the floor between the stairs. So I'm going to re-export the stairs here again. Wow. Export selected. Stairs proxy. And so I've got a good, pretty good sense of mood here. 
um, in terms of uh, what the, the whole setup is looking like. Huh. I wonder why those are lit. Uh, it's because it's an error and they're not. And then, yeah, so to go upstairs, I would go here. And yeah, that is definitely directly under that joist. So that does make sense in terms of the up and down down the stairs. Okay, yeah, this is really feeling the way I want it to feel. So the uh, the only thing that I'm thinking of here, looking at the lighting, is how dark it is in the sides of the room. And so I think what I might do, <clears throat> let's see how well this works. Uh, let's go to, let's get out of here first and foremost. And I'm just going to grab my three point lights, which are just meant to be these in incandescent bulbs. And I'm going to move them over to the other the side of the room. So, move them up a little bit here as well. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a copy of this side of the room. about there we'll build the lighting again and I think having split the lights up like they still have the same range on them there are double the amount of lights but they're they're further away from each other and I think this is going to give me kind of the same type of effect here let's let's go play and see well, it might be a little too well lit but I can always darken the bulbs, too. Uh, we lost a bulb. So something funky is going on here. There's another bulb. Oh, it's because there's a wall here. So that bulb is actually outside the wall. I'm going to have to move that bulb corner here. Yeah, I think I should put them in front of these beams, not in beside them. Same thing with this one. It should go in front of the beam and not in behind it. Uh, and there should be another beam on this one. I'm actually missing a beam here. And I should probably bring this wall out. I like the that it goes back here. That's cool. But to have it just that close to the beam and miss, especially when the rest of the room is against the beam, doesn't make doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Definitely feeling pretty basementy though. What's the uh, those of you watching? What's your uh, what's the frame rate like in uh, in watching the the walk around here? How smooth is it? Is it laggy? Or is it smooth? So let's grab all the point lights. I'm going to make them all movable. Fix that error. One, two, three. Move. These are going to come out. Over. over okay that works there eat those ones oh that's why I was like why do those beams not line up so these ones line up. Stairs are offset. Okay, I'm going to correct that too. I'm going to shift the stairs over so that the beams are all in the same location. That looks funny to me too. So let's go. Let's see what we can do here. So top view. Let's go to wireframe. And grab the room itself. So this was the first thing. Is that this 
stepping in here feels awkward. And it should be lined up with a joist. So, and again, I can put, you know, the water basin's gonna go in here. So maybe I'll put a, um, a furnace and a air conditioner or something in here. Uh, and then the wash basin beside it, which is going to work out nicely. Um, and then where the stairs are is going to move. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to start with the joists. And I'm going to grab this one. I'm going to bring it over here. That's the first step. Get this to the right position. About here. And I'll delete that one. Next, I'll grab the stairs and I'm going to move them to match the joist about there. Next, I'll grab the room and make it match the stairs about there. Center the window a little bit better. Even this, this little weird zigzag here doesn't make sense. And this one too. But whatever. They're there. Okay. So that I think makes more sense now structure wise. So let's go and export these things back out again. Export selected. This is the floor. Export the joists. And export the stairs. In real, import them all. Rebuilt the lighting. Okay. And I'll go for another stroll and see how it feels now. Okay, so lighting is built. Play, full screen. I didn't move the lights. Should move the lights. Let's move the lights. This one and this one. I need to move in front of the beam. in front of the beam yeah no so in front of the beam uh and then these ones go against the beam a little bit more oh i forgot i needed one more beam uh there's another light outside is there not there is you have no purpose And so what I think I'm going to do with this is bring it in, put it up the stairs, which might actually negate the need for this light. I have one going up the stairs here. I don't want to bring it too high because I still have the wall or the, the floor in there. Um, but what I'll do is I'll put a, an open door here, maybe with a wall in front of it, so I don't have to do too much modeling upstairs. And that should give me a little bit closer to the final lighting. Okay, so there's the up the stairs light, which is good. That goes towards the door. Down here. Yep. Okay. Makes sense. I like the light there. That this is going to be the water heater, air conditioner, HVAC, all that stuff. Uh, sink. Washing machine, dryer, I'm going to go here. Uh, I'm going to do a little bit of a den kind of thing over here with a, uh, a workbench, workout bench. 
Oh, a workbench. That would be a cool thing to do over here. Do a tool. Oh, man. I don't want to have to model a whole bunch of tools. Anyway, a tool bench would look really good over here. So if I made this kind of L-shaped dealy that went around here and down here, and I can go and put a bunch of stuff on top of it, uh, drill and screwdriver and stuff like that, and strewn throughout it, maybe one of my 50 totems. Here. So this is the only really dark corners over here. So I've got three lights on that side and two on this side. I think there's no joist there. I think the answer is this light needs to split the difference. Okay. I'll do another pass on the lighting. Yeah, see, that's enough that it just, just lights up this corner. It's kind of just enough that I'm getting the, the light that I want in the places that I want. So there's a beam there, yeah, and this light's going to move too. So this light should be on this beam. Let's do that. And this light, go on this beam. And again, build my lighting here so I get a accurate sense of what it is that I'm looking at. Jump in. Yeah, and that's good. There's a little bit of darkness here, but I think I'm going to get enough bleed through that window um, that it'll do what I want it to. Yeah, that's going to work quite nice, I think. Yeah, so I can I can fill this with boxes and clutter which will kind of close off that cubby hole. I'm going to lean a couple of bikes against the wall here. Almost like they've come in downstairs. Um, I don't know what's going to go along this wall. It might even be worth putting a drywall wall up here. Straight from this beam back here. And then from that beam across to this beam. But if there's actually, when you come down the stairs... It's only this wide, half the room, and I can put a doorway in here and maybe just make a cluttered room here. And maybe I could do the same over here, throw a drywall room. This too, this corner is offset. It should line up with this stud here. So I think what I'm going to do is move that over, and I'll drywall across here too. And I think this far wall should also line up with the studs. I don't think it should be past it where it is. Okay, that stuff all works for me. I think this is going to be pretty good. So let's make those changes. And in the top view here in wireframe, I have the joists, because it's the one that I can go right here, this wall. This is going to move, be in line with the joist. This guy, to run the length. These ones actually come right in beam. Gating 
floor joist. I can shorten. I think that works. The drywall I was mentioning, I'm going to make here as well, just to see how this is going to line up. In the room here, that's on the ground, which is good. Light up till it's flush with the ceiling. Let's make this accurate here so that I don't get light bleed. Okay, and then I'm gonna make a copy of this at 90 degrees. Line it up with that. Back here. Just put it in the room a little bit. We're in the out a little bit this guys back stuff uh, and then the only other thing that I want to do is put a doorway here um, put a wall over here so the choice okay so you can't see the stairs from inside the room, which I don't think makes a lot of sense. Um, door. Door, 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 door. So let's connect. Camphor. Add up. up away and constraints there you are silver over held okay so I'm going to attach these guys together like pivot only for this out that it's X form I'll export selected proxy Drywall. I'll export selected or I'll export selected choice. I don't think I moved the stairs. Port. Import. I'll do another bake of the lighting and have another tour around. I'm gonna have to move one of the lights um, or add another light um, the drywall is going to be an issue. Oh, I was going to add drywall to this room too. I've got another drywall to add. Oh, and I, I'm still getting light bleed. 
Right, because they go up to the joist, but not all the way up. So I'm going to have to find a solution to that. Yeah, it's going to feel really small in this room. So I think if I do let the player in here, it's going to be just a little bit. In. Kitty pride, yo. Uh, and then, yeah, I get a little bit of drywall here. I don't, maybe I won't do that. I like the whole idea of this being wide open and closing it off to sections like that. Maybe it's a bad idea. Maybe it's worth keeping it open so that I don't end up losing the camera in areas. Okay. Yeah, a really dark corner back here. So I'm going to have to try and find some way of lighting that up without uh, without a light. But yeah, I'm pretty pretty pleased with the rest of the lighting. So there's one coming from upstairs, one in front of the stairs, one above the washer dryer, one in the corner of the room, one in the other corner of the room. Okay. Feels like a basement. <sighs> Putting that warm incandescent bulb in there too really helps to feel uh, very much dank, dirty. Um, if I go and grab the environment fog here, the exponential height fog, and I change the scatter color to also be in the warm range, that's going to help much too. Uh, this tint too. It's okay. Play here again. Uh, might be overkill. Now that really changed a lot. Wow, did that ever change a lot? I didn't think I made it that saturated. That's better. Yeah, it definitely feels... I get that musky basement feeling from this. An old, unfinished basement. Yeah, just enough head head clearance. I lived with my aunt for a little while when I was a teenager. They had a house that that beam at the bottom of the stairs wasn't where it was supposed to be. And I must have cracked my forehead on that thing two dozen times in the two months that I lived with. Yeah, I think I'm really starting to think this layout is the way to go. Excellent. Okay, I'm going to save this. We're going to call it a day. Uh, that's enough work on this for now. Uh, now, if you're watching uh, live and you didn't see the beginning, um, what I'm building here is going to be for my... Organic modeling and 3D sculpting classes at George Brown for September, where students are going to be picking the characters that they spend the year modeling. And so the idea that I'm, I'm going to be building here with this is uh, when students play this, they are going to spawn randomly uh, somewhere within the basement, and they are going to be able to freely walk around and explore and strewn throughout the basement is going to be a collection of 50 artifacts um, that I've started putting together here. I've called them totems. And uh, 
And th these are them here. So there's going to be a facehugger pod, a bouquet of flowers, a balloon, a tree branch, and a few that I haven't yet figured out what they're going to be. But they're all kind of relatively about the same size. And each of these things is going to be interactable so that when a student looks at it, uh, that object will become highlighted. And the student should see the message at the bottom, press E to interact. And whatever object they come across first and interact with, it's going to lock in what they're going to be working on for the, uh, for the year. So, for instance, if they find the face hugger, the creature they have to be modeling is an alien beast, which a description of which is a alien slash human hybrid of their own design. Uh, examples of this are the Predator and the Xenomorph from both the Predator and Alien franchises. Um, and so all kinds of really neat things that I've done here. You know, if they find the balloon first and they interact with the balloon, um, they're going to be making a killer clown. And so, you know, think Pennywise or John Wayne Gacy. And so I've got 50 of these things all, uh, all kind of laid out and planned out here um, that is going to be a lot of fun for students to make. And they're going to have to make two characters, uh, one of which is this character. So if they find the mini A-bomb and they interact with that, they have to make a mutant version of a, a monster. Um, so think of movies like the, the Hills Have Eyes. And they also have to make the survivor version of that character. So uh, if you were doing a, a radiated mutant, you know, someone that survives the, the, the mutant radiation or survives the mutant, and then the mutant that goes after them. Same thing here. There's a mummy. I haven't figured out what they're going to find yet to find the mummy, but, uh, you know, this is an Egyptian zombie and example movies are the mummy. And so they're going to have to make a mummy. And, you know, there's all kinds of different things in here, um, some of which are my own creation, like Plantius and Insectius. Uh, genetically modified hu Hueyman? What the hell's a Hueyman? Human plant hybrid. So something that is half plant, half half human being um, that they're going to have to create. And then someone who's also the survivor of that. And so uh, that kind of thing. And so that's what this basement is for. Uh, it's going to be where all of those things that the, uh, the students can find, they're going to be all hidden throughout here. And when you come across one, it's going to light up. And so, anyway, that's what I'm working on. That's the goal of this whole shebang. And so, uh, I'm going to spend the next few days plugging away at this and uh, and hopefully get it done in a fairly short amount of time so that I can get back to Mask. Uh, I really want to be working on that rather than this, but uh, uh, I need to get this done at some point in time before, uh, before the semester starts in September. And so, that is why I want to kind of get it done, get it out of the way, and jump back into what I want to be working on. And so for the next few live stream sessions here, um, you can uh, look forward to seeing this kind of work. Uh, I'm going to be doing everything from uh, the modeling, the layout. I did layout today. And uh, doing uh, some of the modeling, the texturing. Uh, I'm probably going to bring the kid from Mask in here to be the uh, the playable character. Uh, so students are walking around as a young child, which would make, uh, I'm assuming this be a little bit creepier um i have to model all of the assets that the the students can find as well as all the stuff that is just going to be background environment um so the the weight bench and the bicycles and the couch and kind of all of these other things that i have to make um in order to uh, uh make this this environment feel real and so all of that's gonna have to get made uh, and then I'm going to have to start doing the scripting to make it work. And so we're going to go into Blueprint and uh, start setting up a system here that is going to allow me, well, first, we have to get assets to get a glow around them when you look at them. Uh, we have to instigate the message, you know, click E to interact uh, or what have you. Uh, and then I'm also going to write a system where uh, we're going to try and get Unreal to email me. So every time someone plays this for the first time, uh, they'll have to log in to use it, and uh, in that way, it'll send me a a record, a list of who has uh, chosen what, um, which will be a pretty uh, a pretty sweet deal, I think, once I get this done. Um, and so, anyway, that's that's the project I'm going to be plugging away on for the next uh, week or so here. And so, uh, tune in tomorrow, eight o'clock p.m., where uh, I'm going to go in and kind of keep plugging away at this, uh, doing a few more layout things, and uh, and seeing how far I can. Uh, I can take this. And so thanks again for watching. Uh, hit that like button and we'll, uh, we'll see you tomorrow.